Examining Shulman's signature pedagogies in the professions as a middle school teacher has made this writer more deeply aware of the necessity to think like an engineer while teaching. Instruction should be focused on developing the student's habits of thinking like an engineer. Naturally, the idea of teaching students to think like engineers means that the teacher must be taught to do the same. The standard teacher education program focuses more on basic content instruction rather than focused instruction on how to teach students to think. One critique of teacher instruction is drill and practice. However, in addition to teaching students to question and face open-ended questions that require higher order thinking, engineering habits of mind are encouraged through continual practice to help develop an automatic response. After reading the literature, the value of practice-directed thinking is beneficial. Their work points out the need for all citizens, not just scientists, to comprehend the nature of science. Incidentally, the United States has re recently adopted a framework for K-12 science education, Next Generation Science Standards, in which the nature of science is a key focus. Having a scientifically literate society prevents superstition, myth, or assumptions to hold humanity back from his or her, her fullest potential. Titler and Huber point out that most school science is presented to students as a collection of facts and as a history of discoveries. Although science should be practiced and should be driven by student inquiry, middle and high school instructors are not providing the learning and thinking practices consistently enough to prepare the students to think like scientists themselves. The learning environment is predominantly teacher-centered rather than learner-centered. Transitioning from the science classroom to the broader range of STEM education, Kripen and Archambault support the emphasis on inquiry. They propose inquiry as a signature pedagogy itself and the inclusion of the five essential features of inquiry described by the National Science Education Standards. In addition to their support for inquiry-based in instruction, their paper supports the increased implementation of technology, and the authors recognize that technology is advancing at a faster pace than teachers are prepared to incorporate. In the realm of STEM, technology and engineering do not hold a valuable seat at the table. In elementary and middle school, teachers focus more on the core content, hoping the science and math teachers are providing enough instruction to permit us to conclude the students are picking up the engineering on their own without explicit instruction. We do not slice out specific time for engineering and technology instruction due to the elephant in the room, state testing. Engineering is not taught as a traditional subject. It requires thinking about solving problems and then executing the solution within a set of parameters. In our K-12 classrooms, we neither teach nor practice the tasks of thinking like an engineer. Shepard et al. give a layman's definition of engineering as engineering work is about solving problems. Implicit in this statement is the engineering work intends to affect change in the world by, or for example, processes or procedures or introducing new products, technologies, and knowledge. Based on this statement, we can see that traditional lessons in our classrooms do not prepare students for the rigorous challenges of problem solving and thinking strategies necessary to achieve engineering instruction through our science and math classes. Engineering is summed up by a faculty member. To me, being an engineer means being a problem solver, somebody who is capable of analyzing a situation and finds, if not an optimum solution, a solution within a set of constraints. With our world and humanity continually changing, it becomes necessary for engineers to invent or amend our current technologies to accommodate our needs and wants. Therefore, engineers must be lifelong learners to develop and use new technology to accomplish their tasks. Since we live in a global economy in the 21st century, the need for engineers in all their fields is in high demand to keep our country competitive. We have heard for some time that fewer and fewer students choose to study engineering or continue it in the workforce. 
While there may be many causes, one area for professors to work on is their delivery of instruction. Dubrovska re- researched the qualities of great engineering teachers through student surveys. The results revealed the quality students were looking for as a good content area lecturer, enthusiasm, clear, well-structured, experience in real-world industry, and providing example problems from the real world. Additionally, students were looking for, for, for professors who are approachable, patient, and interested in students. Wankat et al. found that professors were continuing to present their instruction in standard lecture format instead of incorporating more collaborative learning experiences. Students are keenly aware of professors who have not worked outside of the higher education realm. Teamwork is an integral part of real-world engineering. Employers emphasize this quality in their search for engineering candidates, and secondary schools have been incorporating group projects for several years. From the literature, the repetition of particular qualities is stressed when defining engineers. These qualities are problem solving, teamwork, and lifelong learning. These three are repeated in the analysis of engineering signature pedagogies as well. Habits of mind are frequently referred to in in conjunction with these qualities. As teachers work to incorporate the technology and engineering into into STEM in middle and high school, it cannot be assumed that science and math teachers are providing the missing elements, whereas scientists ask what something is, explain it with models, and use data to back up or disprove their hypothesis, engineers are asking how to do something better, build models, and use data to determine the need for improvements and changes. Engineers focus on solutions to improve the conditions of mankind in the world. Shepard et al. state engineering is a profession as a profession ought to improve the world for the common good. Engineers work for change that make, makes improvements to our world. However, most of the work comes with a set of constraints, such as time, materials, location, and especially cost. Also from Shepard et al.'s What is Engineering Practice, the authors communicate a significant difference between engineering and other con- content areas is that engineers are not looking for the right answer, they are looking for the best answer. In design problem solving, there is a cycle of identifying a problem, proposing solutions, building a test model, testing, redesigning, and retesting again. Following this cycle leads to the best solution under a set of constraints. Students, professors, and employees of the private sector all report that engineers must solve problems creatively. In order to be a problem solver, the engineer must develop habits of mind toward systems thinking, concrete thinking, critical thinking, and design thinking. To be skilled in all these areas, an engineer needs a foundation of a body of knowledge to draw upon. Some solutions involve improvement to existing products or systems, and others require a new design to help solve new problems. A a trait among engineers is their drive to get the best possible solution. An engineer interviewed by Walks et al. said, It's not enough that I offer one solution to the problem. I have to see if it is the optimal one. Engineers are never satisfied with the status quo. The preferred way to prepare the novice engineer while still an undergraduate is to expose them to real-world problems and real-world role models and experts. Graduates who enter the workforce having little exposure to real-world problem-solving in teams will have much catching up to do. Without practicing real-world applications, they will enter the world still a novice. Teachers of middle and high school could help prepare students through integrated lessons or problem-based learning activities that challenge students to design solutions to real-world problems that affect their community. Student engagement would be higher for students who see a purpose behind the lessons. Another characteristic of the engineering world is teamwork. Engineers do not perform all the problem-solving, designing, building, testing, and retesting on their own. 
Collaboration is essential and should be incorporated in the middle and high schools. Communication skills are not well developed even in our undergraduate students. The literature is overflowing on this element of engineering as well. Teamwork in the real world of engineers is undeniably essential. Lawrence et al. note that first and foremost engineering is a group activity which involves dividing up the tasks, discussing methods, and plans. An interviewee from Shepherd et al. surveys stated, they have, a, have to learn to work professionally with people that are not of their own choosing. Teachers deal with student conflict when assigning group work, this leading, thus leading them to avoid group projects to minimize stress. However, students need to begin while young, understanding that we all must learn to work with others in various circumstances and therefore need to practice communication skills, respect for other ideas, listening skills, and presentation skills. Lawrence et al. share, in order to achieve the greatest success in this process, students must be able to communicate their ideas effectively, ask questions, seek feedback, and make adjustments to their thinking based on input from others. Finally, a successful engineer must be a lifelong learner. Although adjustments are made in the fields of science and mathematics, in general, the basic principles remain constant. While engineers use these principles as their tools to solve problems, the world changes. First and foremost is the world of technology. Today's technology and skill sets are far beyond what is required of engineers who put a man on the moon. Knowledge is dynamic in the 21st century and engineers must be well informed to keep pace in their field. Sometimes engineers must be proactive and accumulate additional knowledge and skills. But, as Shepard et al. state, if engineers are reflective, alert, and methodical as they carry out an engineering project, they are smarter at the end of the project. This new knowledge is shared with other engineers and used for future problem solving. In the next generation science standards, K-12 engineering and technology are barely introduced for the educator to implement. It will take a great deal of professional development to prepare classroom science and math teachers to develop the habits of mind in themselves to pass along to their students. Although grouping is more visible than it was a decade ago, most teachers are not entirely comfortable becoming a facilitator and letting go of the le lectern. Without proper training, resources, and developed lesson plans, most will not step out of their comfort zone. In reflecting upon Schulman's three dimensions of signature pedagogies, the literature has revealed how all three are present. The surface structure, specific and discernible acts of teaching and learning, includes critical thinking, design thinking, problem identification, and solution seeking. The deep structure, beliefs about how to teach, include using real-world problems, teamwork, collaboration, with the use of communication and presentation. The implicit structure, values, attitudes, and dispositions of engineers, requires practical use of knowledge for the good of humanity and environmental responsibility. After absorbing these habits of mind illustrated from the authors as mentioned above concerning engineering signature pedagogies, four arise to above the rest. These would be creative thinking, problem solving, teamwork, and lifelong learning. The educator must provide the students with opportunities to be challenged by problems that are based in real-world scenarios. Additionally, these students must practice working collaboratively. Teachers must become the facilitator so students will have opportunities to work in their groups to practice engineering.